This video tells you how to assign oxidation number. You can think of oxidation number as being the charge on an atom. Why is the word charge in quotes? Because we're imposing an artificial limit called the ionic limit. In the ionic limit, we assume that all bonds are 100% ionic. This means that the more electronegative atom involved in the bond gets all of the bonding electrons. This also means that the less electronegative atom gets none. Consider the molecule hydrogen fluoride. It's composed of a hydrogen atom bonded to a fluorine atom. Each one of these dots represents an electron, and the dashed line represents the bonding electrons. That's two electrons per bond. Now, look over here. That's a plain hydrogen atom. It should have one electron, and a plain fluorine atom should have seven. Okay? Now, in the ionic limit, fluorine being more electronegative gets all of the bonding electrons. That means it gets both. So, the fluorine has eight electrons, and the hydrogen has zero electrons. What does that mean for their oxidation number? Well, fluorine should have seven, but it has eight. Each electron has a charge of minus one. So fluorine, seven minus eight equals minus one. Hydrogen should have one, but it has zero. One minus zero equals plus one. Just a quick note about electronegativity here. We're gonna symbolize it EN. Electronegativity is the tendency of an atom to attract bonding electrons to itself. Electronegativity varies as a function of position on the periodic table. I remember it this way. It increases as you go up and to the right. The maximum electronegativity is found with the atom fluorine its electronegativity value is 4.0. The minimum electronegativity value is found with the element francium, whose electronegativity is 0.7. You need to determine the oxidation numbers for every atom in a compound, given a chemical formula. So, these are the rules. The oxidation number of a plane element is zero, for a monatomic ion, the oxidation number equals the charge. Rule number three, for group one and two metals, the oxidation number is plus one or plus two when they're in compound. For rule number four, dealing with hydrogen, it depends on whether or not the other atom in the compound is a metal. Rule number five, the most electronegative atom gets the oxidation number equivalent to its monatomic anion charge. And rule number six, the sum of the oxidation numbers equals the overall charge. We'll go through the rules in order now. For a pure element, the oxidation number is zero. This is because there is no difference in electronegativity in an element. Down below are written the formulas of four different elements. Sodium is always just written as Na its oxidation number will be zero. Consider bromine. Each bromine atom should have seven electrons. Here's the bromine molecule. And since each bromine atom has an equal electronegativity, they share the bonding pair of electrons equally. So inside the circle for each element are three pairs of non-bonding electrons, and one bonding electron. In other words, each bromine atom has seven electrons, as it should. So the oxidation number of bromine is zero. Same in S8, zero. Same in P4, zero. The oxidation number for a pure element is always zero. Rule number two, 
For monatomic ions, the oxidation number is the charge. Fe3 plus, that's iron 3. The charge on the ion is 3 plus, and the oxidation number is 3 plus. For O2 minus, the charge on the ion is minus 2, and the oxidation number is minus 2. For Cl minus, you guessed it, minus 1. For Na plus, the oxidation number is plus 1. For Ca2 plus, the oxidation number is plus 2. For aluminum, plus 3. For group 1 and 2 metals, the oxidation number is plus 1 and plus 2, respectively, when they're in compounds. Here are a couple of examples. NaCl and CaCl2. Sodium is group 1, so its oxidation number will be plus 1. Calcium, group 2, so its oxidation number is plus 2. We can add to this, aluminum will always be plus 3. With hydrogen, the oxidation number depends on whether or not the other element in the compound is a metal or a nonmetal. If the other element is a nonmetal, as is the case with water, H2O, then hydrogen is less electronegative and it gets the oxidation number plus 1. On the other hand, if the other element is a metal, as in calcium hydride, hydrogen is more electronegative than calcium, and it gets the bonding electrons, in which case its oxidation number is minus 1. After you've assigned any hydrogens, go on to the most electronegative atom. The oxidation number on the most electronegative atom will be the charge of that element if it's an anion. In CO2, oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. It'll have an oxidation number of minus 2. In NH3, we deal with the hydrogen first. Nitrogen is a nonmetal, so it's more electronegative than hydrogen. The hydrogens are plus 1. Nitrogen, being more electronegative, gets minus 3 since it's in group 15. For H3PO4, you deal with the hydrogen first. It's plus 1. Now go on to the most electronegative atom. It's oxygen at minus 2. Rule number 6 will tell us how to get the oxidation number on the phosphorus. I should also point out that sometimes oxygens are not minus 2. Consider hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Do the hydrogen first. It's plus 1. In this case, the oxygen is minus 1. We'll see why in a sec. Going back to phosphoric acid, we wanted to know the oxidation number on phosphorus. Well, we're going to use rule number 6 to find it. We already got that hydrogen, since it's paired with nonmetals, is plus 1, and oxygen, being most electronegative, is minus 1. Now we have to figure out what the total contribution from the other atoms is. The total contribution from hydrogen is 3 times plus 1, since there are 3 hydrogens, and each one contributes plus 1. Up above hydrogen, I will write that contribution as plus 3. The total contribution from oxygen is minus 8, since there are 4 of them contributing to each. Now the phosphorus has a contribution of x, such that x plus 3 minus 8 equals 0. That's the overall charge. Therefore, x minus 5 equals 0, and x equals plus 5. Since there's only one phosphorus in the compound, that means the oxidation number on phosphorus is plus 5.
Look here to see the overall charge. If nothing is written, it's zero. Now let's look at hydrogen peroxide again, H2O2. We deal with hydrogen first when it's present. The hydrogen is plus one. Two of them contribute a total of plus two. That means the overall contribution from oxygen, X, has to be such that X plus two equals the overall charge of zero. Again, since nothing is written here. Therefore, x equals negative 2. That means that the individual oxidation number on oxygen and hydrogen peroxide is negative 2 divided by the subscript on oxygen, 2, which is negative 1. Let's look at a more complicated case, the hydrogen phosphite ion. It has a formula of HPO3 2 minus. Deal with hydrogen first. It's with nonmetals, so it's plus one. The total number of hydrogens is one. One times plus one gives a total contribution from hydrogen of plus one. Next, we deal with oxygen since it's more electronegative than phosphorus. Each oxygen supplies minus two. There's three of them. Three times negative two is a total contribution of negative six. Now, phosphorus is x, such that x plus one minus six equals the overall charge, aha, of negative two. Remember, if nothing were written for a charge, the charge would be zero. Now let's go about solving this thing. So x minus five equals minus two. Let's add five to each side. x equals three. Since there's only one phosphorus in the compound, its oxidation number is plus three. Now let's just double check that we are correct. HPO3 two minus plus one plus three minus six. One plus three is four minus six equals two. So rule number six applied.